Hmm. Just discovered it isn't a good idea to uh, to just mow over the top of of a five inch gauge railway. Hmm. I think I might uh, I might have to replace this one. <laughs> And so began the great track laying of late 2019. I started off from the concrete pad and cut away the flower beds as necessary. The concrete pad was the datum that all the heights were taken from as the track is laid on top of that and I couldn't remove that. The soil was removed where necessary and piled up um, in other places and that's all the roadbed is, just compacted soil. The flower beds and the road bed itself were held back with bricks and old slate tiles from the roof. And I worked out from the concrete pad and just proceeded across the garden as I went. The gradients were worked out using a 2 metre batten with a spirit level and a, a clamp onto a stake in order to, to alter the levels just to see uh, where I should build the banks up to to give an acceptable gradient and I tried to make it as level across the track as I could and it really is just as simple as that the the road bed um, it needs to be low impact because this is a rented property and I don't own the garden and talking of which um, the ballast I chose uh, was bark chippings which is somewhat unconventional for a railway but again I needed something which was cheap and, and low impact um, this will compost down uh, granite chippings won't um, so that was poured on top of the roadbed um, when I remembered I put down the sheets of cardboard first for weed suppressant but I found actually that the cardboard didn't make much difference um, the same amount of weeds grew <laughs> anyway so the bark chipping I found I could actually um, pack under the sleepers in order to get a, a level firm track bed. Um, it's pretty good. Obviously the sleepers won't last as long um, because in the autumn and winter it retains moisture where granite chippings wouldn't. But it has performed well as a ballast. A good yes. firm road bed uh, which is adjustable. And with the easy track laying done, I then turn my attention to the difficult task of crossing the lawn. Hello and welcome back to the estate. And another instalment of minimal expectations. I won't show my face because I am full of cold and look awful. Probably sound even worse. Today will be uh, fabricating the bridge section uh, which I have mocked out here which is going to connect this set of points with that set of points that will be removable so that I can then mow the lawn in one strip so I've stained the upper surface of two three by twos and I've chopped up uh, a load of this rough sawn treated batten, which is about inch by inch and a half, into 12 inch lengths. And I have stained the undersides, <coughs> uh, and I've stained the mating surfaces um, to uh, because I won't be able to stain them once they've been screwed together, of course. Um, the stain is a, um, a wood a fence preservative, uh, which I bought a massive bucket of, which is why everything is being stained with the same stuff. So, I've got 19 battens to go across, and then I'll be ra laying the rail directly on top of these. The screws I'm using are these 5mm by 60. So once they are um, countersunk into the top you can see they go most of the way through the wood so of course I'm going to have to uh, put some pretty hefty pilot holes in to avoid um, splitting these um, main members and perhaps I will consider doing um, one and then two 
and then here one and then two, perhaps that would discourage uh, any tendency to split. one uh, bridge of timbers all put together you can see how it fits in the space <laughs> now just to stain the, uh, the remaining sides and fix the rails on When I'm making uh, normal panels of track, uh, as normal as my panels of track can be, I use one of a few um, track uh, drilling jigs, sleeper drilling jigs, that I've got. Now this one has a, a tab on the end, and that's designed to fit over a 10 inch sleeper, um, like this one, and you can see that the holes then uh, straddle the rails where the rail should be. Um, so what I've done is I've, uh, this one was over long on this end, I've cut this end off so that if I line it up on the 12 inch sleepers for the bridge then I can use it just the same way. Over the last few years, or, or over the last year, I've changed my favourite um, sleeper uh, rail holding screw. Um, these screws, I'll place a link to them, they've got a, a, a big sort of pan head that's really good at holding the foot of the uh, flat bottom rail and the shank is a little thicker um, so I can get away with opening out these holes a little on the outside. Another thing that we'll be doing is staggering these holes so We've got three um, screws already through each sleeper on the centre line, and I thought maybe adding another another four to that centre line might be asking a bit much out of this um, fairly cheap baton. It might have a tendency to split. So I'm going to line up my jig on this side of the sleeper, lining up this edge, and drill the middle two holes. And then I'm going to move it over to this edge of the sleeper and drill the outside holes in a uh, trapezium um, arrangement. Right, I've got 19 times 4 holes to drill, I've got a charged up battery drill and it's time to get going. So the sleevers are pre-drilled and we've put our two straight lengths of rail, there'll be two short lengths of curve at the end of the bridge. Um, put our two straight lengths of rail on there and it's time to start putting in, but not tightening, the um, pan head screws. <laughs> The screws are now um, in position, but not tightened. So it's time now to tighten them down and keep the rails five inches apart. So I've made a, um, a little gauging jig, which I found very useful when um, building the points as well, um, with these little um, notches to hold the rails in place. And um, that should be the clearance for check rails. So um, that goes on there and it should ensure that the rails are uh, exactly where we want them to be. And what I've found is that as you tighten the screws uh, in the middle, 
the rail tends to lean over and then when you tighten the screws on the outside the rail then tends to lean over towards the outside so actually by um, adjusting the uh, relative um, depth of these two screws you can um, get a, a fair amount of control over the gauge that you end up with. We'll keep that nice and close and with the clutch on the drill oops, I need the clutch set a little lower so let's set it to number nine So now, now this is quite tight, but now it's quite loose, and that's what we want. Okay, that seemed to work. On to the next one. Well, that didn't go too badly, um, but just to prove that I'm feeling pretty ill. Uh, yes, I. Hmm. They all. Oh, that way round, apart from this one, which is that way round, which rather ruins the effect. But never mind, there we are. At least I can point that out and say, Yes, I, I built that. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so uh, that's the all the track laying on the on the bridge there. So now on to the finishing off the set of points at the other end of the garden there to go in here. And we can then connect the high level and low level um, runs. But time for a cup of tea, I think.